wherever evil threatens to overwhelm the peace and inherent goodness of man, Ator will ride to do battle. Wherever man is oppressed, Ator will answer a call for help and to be freed from bondage. No one is too powerful and protected to avoid his rightful punishment. He is the guardian of knowledge and the hope of the future. Ator, the Avenger. talking Ator the Invincible director and written by Joe Diamato and this is actually the second Ator movie that stars Mars O'Keefe and Lisa Foster so this actually is a 1984 movie uh, there's a little bit of confusion with the Ator series so just to be clear uh, we have Ator um, the Fighting Eagle which is the first movie that came out in 82 then this was followed up in 1984 the same year as Ken the Destroyer by Ator the Invincible which is also known as Blade Master among a host of other movies then we had a third movie which is commonly known as the Iron Warrior and that was the last one to feature Miles O'Keefe but there is actually a fourth movie called Quest of the Mighty Sword that features in as the role of eight or a different actor actually the same guy who played Thor in the Incredible Hulk Returns movie but today we're talking about the second film uh, in the UK it was known as eight or the Invincible but obviously a host of other names the Blade Master in the States for example and this was a really quick movie to, to make. Um, as I say, IMDb had it down as a 1982 release, but as far as I'm aware, this wasn't even in production until 1983, because it was rushed out to, co to coincide with Kane the Destroyer film. Uh, apparently there was very little script in the movie. It was more or less kind of an ad hoc, about a two-week shoot. Um, so you can imagine kind of what this movie is like. Now, I don't review things ironically. It's easy to kind of pick holes in you know, cheesy 80s uh, movies. But I used to love the Ator series when I was a kid. I had them all on VHS. Um, and I'm kind of, you know, I like a big, I like a, fa a fantasy movie. I like a sword and sorcery film. So I've got around to watching this one. So the plot of this one is, uh, there's a new bad guy, Zor, I think his name is, and uh, he has captured kind of Ator's mentor. And Ator's mentor has created some type of, or found some sort of weapon uh, that this bad guy wants, obviously, for his own purposes. So uh, this guy's daughter finds Ator and asks for his help. So he, uh, along with his silent companion, try and rescue Ator's mentor and, and uh, fight various bad guys along the way, including a giant puppet snake. So let's talk about, if anything, what works in this movie. So the Ator series really is probably considered the bottom of the barrel in regards to the uh, the kind of the sword and sorcery genre, even kind of sitting below like the Death Stalkers series, for example. I really enjoyed these movies when I was a kid back then. We didn't have the internet, so, you know, I had them all on VHS, and I just liked them, uh, unironically, for just a kind of a fun adventure. But obviously watching it with today's eyes, you know, obviously they, they are not good movies. Let's be honest, none of the Ator films are a particularly good movie. If I had to say one, I would say the third one is probably my favourite out of the series. Um, this one, to be honest with you, out of the three Miles O'Keefe ones, I remember the least. Um, so what works? The one, one, the one thing I think maybe is even unintentional that I think works in this movie is our bad guy is... For this type of movie, relatively nuanced, I actually don't think this was intentional uh, and is more of just something that has happened, but he doesn't seem like an out-and-out -out bad guy. Uh, for example, he captures um, Ator's mentor, but he doesn't really torture him. Uh, even when his first henchman fails to kill Ator, um, you know, he's going to get him flogged, but he's convinced not to do it and just to kind of like have him kind of sent away and things like this. So he, he didn't actually treat uh, Ator's mentor that badly, to be honest with you. He just, and he actually has um, some sort of conversation with uh, the Ator's mentor. That sounds like a bit of a tongue twister, doesn't it? Even when this guy is trying to push him and trying to provoke him, really, he still seems not all that of a bad guy. I've actually seen this in one of the, uh, I forget which one it was, but there was one of these um, 
Maybe in a Deathstalker movie or one of maybe Wizards of the uh, Lost Kingdom where the, the, the actual bad guy, really when you look at it, wasn't all that bad. And it's kind of the same with this one. He, he doesn't seem a complete, he doesn't seem evil. Let me put it that. He maybe seems selfish and, and kind of, um, you know, as you probably expect as a, as a bad guy, but not maybe out and out evil. I don't think this was intentional, but looking at, at today's lens, it actually isn't too bad. He looks terrible. He's got a terrible wig, horrible fake moustache, makeup, and all that. He doesn't look uh, like he's like a particularly well-designed character, but his motivations at least um, didn't seem out and out evil, which I found actually quite interesting, to be honest with you. I actually quite like Miles O'Keefe. He actually is... Um, considered a real B-movie actor, but I've actually quite enjoyed some of his work. I thought he actually made quite a good Dracula in the in the Waxworks movie, for example, and I've seen him in a, a number of other roles, and I've always sort of quite liked him as, as a B-movie, and he certainly looks the part. Admittedly, he kind of looks very much like a kind of a male model here. Uh, he, of course, played Tarzan in the, in the uh, Tarzan the Ape Man film, and he kind of more or, looks, more or less looks the same, to be honest. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, he doesn't really have a hell of a lot to do, to, to, to be quite frank, in this movie. Um, and it's... I've got to be honest with you, though, this one was was a little bit of a tough watch. There's no getting around it. I think, at, certainly at the 3, 8 or movie starring Miles like, O'Keefe, this is definitely the weakest. And this is probably why I have the least amount of memories about it. Because to be honest, there's not a lot happens in this movie. Ator doesn't really show up really until 20, 25 minutes into the film. Um, and then it's, when, when we actually go through it, it's actually this kind of Asian guy who's his kind of like sidekick actually does the most uh, work in the movie. You know, he, he kind of like, Ator gets captured, he frees him. Um, this Asian guy kills the bad guy. In the end. You know, Ator actually doesn't do very much in this film. There's not a lot for him to do. So he seems like a big lunk, to be honest, kind of uh, blindly wandering into one conflict to the next. The action sequences really are quite poor. Even for the kind of the mid 80s standard, like the, the, the combat sequences and stuff like that, quite poorly choreographed. Like I've said, this one was, was hastily put together and it really kind of shows. Um, the cinematography is quite bland. The first half of the movie sort of mainly is kind of like in caves and stuff, and then the kind of we get like a little bit of an external in the middle and a kind of a, in, in a castle at the end. But it all looks very dull, unfortunately. Um, Miles Doe Cave, I think, as much as I like him, and he doesn't really have a lot to do. He really doesn't emote much in this movie. Let's just put it like that. Um, we have some obviously very silly moments at the end where he kind of hang glides in. It's really unclear about kind of uh, what kind of where we are in this movie, sort of in kind of historic and historical context. That might sound weird, but we see like cavemen at the beginning, but then we see caves with full suits of armor, and at the end we have some guy or eight or flying in on a clearly modern hang glider and stuff like that. It's just a really like messy film in regards to. Uh, you know, the kind of the, the fantasy time period, so to speak. I know it's not obviously meant to be a historical film, but, you know, is it kind of prehistory? Is it dark age? Is it medieval? Or fantasy version of that? It never really is kind of clear. Um, the It's actually quite boring as well, I have to say. There's not really any interesting set pieces. All the bad guys, kind of the, the, kind of the soldiers are all quite dull. It's just we just kind of like see some sequences and there's some more and there's some more. It's, there's lots of kind of like just people talking in dark rooms and caves and things. Um, there's not a hell of a lot of action, to be honest with you. Uh, I guess the the most memorable scene, so to speak, is where Ator fights a giant snake. And it's just, uh, you know, a huge cuddly snake by the looks of it. Uh, in Wisely shot in the dark. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's quite an amusing scene and obviously the, the big special effects bit from the movie. Um, I don't think it has the kind of the... Uh, the, the, the problem is with this one, it's, it's dull. Uh, I think the first movie is is more fun to watch in a, silly, a sillier way. And I actually think the third movie... I don't really remember much about the fourth one, to be honest. But um, the third one, I, I always remember having some really good cinematography and some quite cool costume design. This one is just dull. 
Um, so it's not even fun to watch for a nostalgic point of view because it, it's so humdrum. It's just kind of like, oh, there's a, a, a cheap battle, a bunch of kind of cheesy dialogue, a cheap battle, um, eight or standing around kind of being captured and stuff. It's just not very good in any way. Um, and so normally I can find some things to kind of like enjoy in a kind of a nostalgic and I actually quite like cheesy B movie kind of level. But this one is just kind of boring, to be honest. And none of the things that I actually like about this series, you know, unapologetically, I can't say about this one. So this one is not a good film by any stretch. I'm going to have to be honest with you. This one's probably a two out of ten. It is possibly one of the weakest Sword and Sorcery movies out there, if I'm completely honest. Uh, I may well do the rest of the Atoll series at some point, but I, I remember this one out of the three uh, Miles, uh, Miles L. Keith ones the least, so I kind of wanted to watch this one to kind of refresh my memory, as I say, but yeah, it's pretty bad. It's a 2 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.